Hi and welcome. This video tutorial demonstrates how to use Google Earth to create artificial lakes and reservoirs in default FSX scenery. In addition to Google Earth, which we use to make the various exclusion and pathway KML files, we will use the FSX KML utility to convert these into scenery BGLs. Now, don't worry if you've not come across these types of file before. The tutorial will explain their function and use. Now, FSX does a pretty good job of representing inland lakes in the default scenery, but when it comes to reservoirs and dams, the results aren't so good. This is often because no allowance is made for the difference in elevation of the water above the dam and the outflow below the base of the dam. For example, let's take a look at the Edersee, a reservoir some 14 kilometers southeast of Korbach in northern Hesse, Germany. Looking northwards from 5,000 feet, the default Edersee appears quite realistic. But at the dam location, the upper and lower reservoir levels are the same, which is inappropriate. If we want more realism, we're going to have to separate the upper and lower water bodies and give them different elevations. Before we create the new upper and lower water bodies in FSX, we must exclude the whole of the existing reservoir. So fire up Google Earth and find a location by typing Adasa Reservoir in the search box and Google Earth should then locate our area. We'll now make an exclusion rectangle with a Google Earth path function. Click on the Add Path icon and enter a suitable name for the new path, like Reservoir Exclusion. Back on the aerial image, select and click on four vertices for the exclusion rectangle. Click to locate a fifth vertex near the first vertex and then drag this to close the rectangle. The first vertex dot will change color from red to blue. Click OK in the new path window to finish. The new path representing the reservoir exclusion rectangle should now appear in your places list. Right click on the new path and select save place as. Navigate to where you wish to save the file and save as KML and not KMZ which is the default. The next step is to convert this KML file into a BGL for FSX. The Google Earth KML file is basically an XML file containing the latitude and longitude coordinates of the exclusion rectangle. This is what it looks like in Notepad. Unfortunately, Google Earth has inserted extra tab characters in the XML with the coordinate data. These extra tabs need to be removed, and you can do this by editing the KML using Notepad. Locate the cursor just before the first coordinate and delete the tab characters to left justify the data. Now locate the end of the last coordinate, that's the zero, and delete the tab character after it. Of course you can't see this particular tab character, but it is there. Now save the KML. The next step is to convert the exclusion rectangle KML into a BGL file for FSX. For this conversion we use the FSX KML utility. First we open the exclusion rectangle KML file. Click 
Then click on the name and we can see the shape of the exclusion rectangle looking very much like that we made in Google Earth. Clicking vertices reveals the coordinates we edited with WordPad. Next, we must assign a description to the KML that results in the exclusion of the default ADSA reservoir water body. So open the description drop down menu and select Exclude Water Polys. The exclusion rectangle can now be transformed into a BGL for FSX. To do this, we click Build. The first time you use the build function in FSX KML, you must set up the paths that link to the key files in your FSX setup. First is your main FSX folder. Next, other locations of your terrain SDK and BGL compiler SDK folders. You will find these in your FSX SDK folder. Next is the location of the FW Tools Utility folder, which you will probably need to download. Lastly, the location of the file where the compiled exclusion rectangle BGL is to be stored. With these paths set up, you can click the Build button. If the KML file is OK, FSX KML will require you to hit a key to complete the build. And once finished, we can open the output folder to confirm that the new BGL has been saved. To do this, we click on Open Folder and can then see that the BGL has been created. Next, we place the exclusion rectangle BGL into FSX. The standard way to introduce scenery BGLs into FSX is via the Add-on Scenery folder. Let's open this folder to see the contents. For our reservoir project, we need to make a new folder in Add-on Scenery and name it. Let's call it A to Z. Open this folder and create a folder called Scenery. The name Scenery is mandatory, so do spell it right. Lastly, open this Scenery folder and then place the exclusion rectangle BGL inside. Now we can see the effect of the exclusion rectangle in FSX. Let's fire up FSX again and go back to our view of the A to Z with the default FSX scenery. The default reservoir is still there. Although we've created and saved the exclusion rectangle BGL in FSX's add-on scenery, we need to activate the new scenery in FSX's scenery library for it to have any effect. So, navigate to the scenery library to activate the new A to Z scenery. Click Add Area and open Add-on Scenery. Select the new A to Z Scenery folder, press OK, and then left-click somewhere in the white space if you're still using Windows 7. The A to Z folder will now appear at the top of the list. Click OK again for the Scenery Library database to be updated. And here's the result. The default reservoir has disappeared. It's been successfully excluded. In the next stage of the project, we will define the two new water bodies that represent a more realistic upper reservoir and the outflow reservoir below it. I'll show you how we complete the project in the second part of the tutorial, 
when we will use Google Earth paths to generate the water body shapes and FSX KML to produce the BGLs for FSX. See you then and thanks for watching.